Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. If we have a function and the y value for that function gets closer and closer to some real number, we think about that being a limit. But as the x value gets larger and larger without bounds, so in other words, as we go forever to the right, keep just going farther and farther to the right, more and more positive values of x on the graph, and think about traveling forever in that direction, then we will call that the limit as x approaches infinity of the function, and that limit will be L. The way that we interpreted this idea in algebra or a pre-calculus class was the idea of a horizontal asymptote, the idea that as I move to the right on a graph forever, I get closer and closer to some horizontal line, some y value. We called that a horizontal asymptote before. Let's just look at a bunch of cases of these. So here I have a graph. You'll notice it does approach a horizontal asymptote. I think you can tell by looking at this. So this is the graph of y equals 1 over x. When we look at this, we say, what is the limit as x approaches infinity? Well, as we go further and further out to the right on the graph, it looks like we're getting closer and closer to the horizontal axis, the x-axis. And that is a y value of 0 on the axis, so this limit is actually 0. Let's take a look at the other end, the end behavior on the left side of the graph. So that's actually going to be the limit as x approaches negative infinity, right, as our x value gets more and more negative as we go off the left side of the page, basically, on our graph. So as we continue left on our graph, you'll see that we're actually approaching the horizontal axis as well, but we're doing so just from below the axis. But we're still approaching the axis, which is a y value of 0, so our limit as x approaches negative infinity of 1 over x is also 0. So in general, this idea is if I have some number like 1 over something that gets infinitely large, right? Think x getting larger and larger, 1 over a million, 1 over a billion, 1 over numbers bigger and bigger that number is going to become smaller and smaller overall. So really, the limit of some constant divided by something getting larger and larger is going to be a value of zero. Let's take a look at some limits involving rational functions and think of it in terms of a number over something really, really large getting close to zero. So here I have the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x over x squared minus 4. What we're going to do is actually use a technique where we will divide by the highest power in the denominator. We're going to do that to every term. So I'm going to go ahead and see that my highest power of x, actually my only power of x in the denominator, is x squared, right? So I'm going to divide everything by x squared. So I'm going to have the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x over x squared over x squared over x squared minus 4 over x squared. So now let's look at some simplifying here. So think about if I divided everything by x squared like we just did, then simplifying this 3x over x squared actually becomes 3 over x and the stuff on the bottom we get x squared over x squared becomes 1 and then this would stay minus 4 over x squared. So now think about what's happening in relation to what we said before about having a constant over something that gets infinitely large. This term is going to go to a value of 0, right? That limit will be 0. 3 divided by something that gets larger and larger, that will tend towards 0. Same thing for this 4 over x squared here. Uh, as x gets larger and larger, this thing, and then square it, right, is getting large very quickly. Um, and we have 4 over something that gets infinitely large. So this term also here is going to go to 0 as well. So the idea is we get something that is 0 on the top divided by 1 minus something that has a limit of 0 on the bottom, and that gives us 0 divided by 1, which of course gives us a limit of 0. So this limit as x approaches infinity of 3x over x squared minus 4 is 0. And again, you can think of this back in pre-calculus terms. If you remember that this has a higher power on the bottom than it does on the top, then you could say that this is going to approach the horizontal axis, or y equals 0. Same idea here. If we look at the limit now as x approaches infinity of 3x squared over x squared minus 4, let's do a similar thing. And then we'll go back and talk about this in pre-limit terms. So the limit as x approaches infinity of if we have 3x squared divided by x squared now over x squared divided by x squared minus 4 
divided by x squared. So each of these, think about now reducing anything that we can and simplifying algebraically. The top term, of course, is going to be 3, right? So we'll get 3 on the top. For this x squared over x squared, we'll get 1. And then if I keep my minus 4 over x squared, you can see that this term again is really going to go to 0, right? I have a constant divided by something that gets infinitely large, so that's basically, as x gets bigger and bigger, going to approach 0. So we get a limit that is 3 divided by 1 minus 0 again, and 3 divided by 1 minus 0, 3 divided by 1 would be 3, right? If you had looked at this in pre-calculus, y equals this function, let's say you would have noticed maybe that the lead terms are the same power of x, so in order to get the horizontal asymptote equation, we would compare the lead coefficients. This is 3x squared, this is 1x squared, and 3 divided by 1 gives us 3. Looking here now at the limit where we have 3x cubed on the top. So think about if we still divide by the largest power of x in the denominator, then here we'll get something a little different. We'll get 3x cubed over x squared divided by, same thing on the bottom though, right? x squared over x squared minus 4 over x squared. And if I reduce on the top, you'll notice I actually have a power of x that is higher on the top. So I actually get 3x for this one. And then down here, we get x squared over x squared would be 1 minus 4 over x squared again. We know what happens to this term here. We know that this term will approach a value of 0. Now up here in the numerator, we have something that's getting larger and larger. x is tending toward infinity. 3 times infinity is still going to be something infinitely large, right? So this term here is actually going to approach some infinite value. So now think about what we have. Infinity is not really a number we can plug into a fraction and do arithmetic with. But think about you have something that is approaching an infinitely large value over something that is approaching 1 minus 0, right? In other words, I have something that is approaching a very, very large number on top and just the number 1 on the bottom. I think we can agree that dividing a very large number by 1 is still a very large number, right? So we get an infinite limit here. If you looked at this as a rational function, you might have thought in algebra or pre-calculus you have a power of x that is one higher on the top than the power on the bottom, and so this would have what we call a slant or an oblique asymptote. And you would see that as you follow that oblique asymptote, it's getting larger and larger as you travel on that oblique asymptote to the right, and so that would be tending toward positive infinity. If instead of working with rational functions, we think about polynomial functions, which are actually very well behaved and more so than rational functions. The idea of limits involving polynomial functions as we approach infinite values, that was the idea of end behavior in pre-calculus or algebra. We said, you know, what happens as we travel to the right or to the left on this graph of a parabola or something like that? We talked about that being end behavior, and you might have even drawn end behavior diagrams with arrows going up and down on the right side of a function. If we look at some examples here, you can see obviously y equals x squared. We have right end behavior that is going positive, and we have left end behavior that is going positive as well. A different thing happens on the graph of y equals x cubed. Our right end behavior is going infinitely positive. Our left end behavior is actually going infinitely negative. Now, a couple of things we want to point out x squared is really the same as 1x squared, and x cubed is really the same as 1x cubed. And we want to make a note that when we have a positive coefficient in front of our highest power term, what we call the degree of the polynomial, then that tells us what the right side end behavior is going to be. So this is a positive 1x squared. That means the right side end behavior is going to be positive. This is a positive 1x cubed, so that means the right end behavior is going to be positive. So the sign of our highest power term, our degree, tells us the limit as x approaches infinity for a polynomial, whether it will be positive or negative. 
The power of the highest term in our polynomial, in other words, the degree, tells us what happens on the other side. So this is an even degree. This is degree two because it has x squared. And so when we have an even degree, the other side of our polynomial graph is going to have the same behavior. So the limit as x approaches infinity on this graph would be positive infinite. The limit as x approaches negative infinity will be the same as what happened on the other side because this is an even degree polynomial. This is an odd degree polynomial over here, y equals x cubed. So an odd degree polynomial means that the other side is going to have the opposite behavior. So since on the right side, as x approaches positive infinity on this graph, we would go positive infinite. On the other side, we would go negative infinite as x approaches negative infinity. So here we have the limit as x approaches infinity of a positive 3x squared minus 5x plus 1. This is the most powerful term. We look at the lead coefficient. That is a positive number. So this would have positive infinite growth as we head to the right on the graph. So this limit will be infinite. So now as x approaches negative infinity, we focus on the power of the lead term. And we say, well, this is an even power, so we're going to have the same behavior on the opposite side of the graph. So as we approach negative infinity on this graph, we would also tend toward positive infinity. If we look at x approaching infinity on y equals negative x squared plus 4x plus 2, now you'll notice we have a lead coefficient of negative 1 on our highest power of x. So since that's a negative lead coefficient, that means that as x approaches infinity, we will tend toward negative infinity. And because this is, again, an even degree polynomial, we will have the same behavior on the other side. So the limit as x approaches negative infinity will be the same as when x approaches positive infinity. Let's look at an odd degree. So here I have 2x to the 5 minus x squared plus 1. So as x approaches infinity, we just look at the sign of the coefficient for the lead term. That's a positive 2. So that tells us this limit is going to be positive infinite. Now, as we approach negative infinity, we look at the power. This is an odd power, x to the 5. So that means we will have the opposite behavior that we had as x approaches positive infinity. So this end will actually tend toward negative infinity. If we look over here now, I've changed my lead term to have a coefficient of negative 2. So the coefficient of negative 2 as x approaches infinity here tells us that this is going to tend toward negative infinity. And in this one, limit as x approaches negative infinity, we pay attention to the odd power. And we say, well, that's going to have opposite behavior that we had on the other side. So since this side was tending toward negative infinity, this side will tend toward positive infinity. Looking at limits involving exponential functions where we just have a constant multiple of x in the exponent. So we have e to the x here and we have e to the negative x. You can see a difference here, I think. So if we look at y equals e to the x as we travel to the right, we're increasing. So we're actually decreasing as we go to the left toward the axis and we're increasing without bound as we go to the right. This is what we think of as an exponential growth function. So as x gets larger, y gets larger, and as x gets more negative, then we tend toward the axis. Over here, we have what we think of as exponential decay when we have a negative multiple of x in our exponent. And so here, this is a decreasing function. As we tend toward positive infinity toward the right, then we will approach the axis. And as we tend toward negative infinity toward the left, then we will grow positive without bound looking at these. So if I look at the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x over 2, this is a positive multiple of x. It's 1 half x, right? This is 1 half times x. So because that's a positive multiple of x in the exponential, we can think of this as exponential growth. And if you think back a second or you rewind real quick, you'll notice that as we tend toward the right side on our graph of a growth function, that's going to tend toward positive infinity. And this is the same function. So on an exponential growth function, as we tend toward the left side of the graph forever, then that will actually approach the axis. And so we get a limit of zero here. 
For exponential decay function, you can see that this is decay because we have basically negative two times x. So we have a negative multiple of x here, this is decay. And in an exponential decay function, as we tend toward the right side of the graph, we will go toward the axis, and that will give us a limit of zero. And on a decay function, as we tend toward the left side of the graph, then we will actually increase without bound, if you look back at our exponential decay graph, as we head toward the left side of our graph for exponential decay. If we look at limits involving logarithms, you'll notice if we graph y equals ln x, you'll see that we do have a graph that increases without bound as we head toward the right, but you'll actually notice we wouldn't be able to approach negative infinity on this graph because logarithms are not even defined for zero or anything negative. We're only allowed to have positive values of x that we can plug into this function. So we don't actually approach infinity or negative infinity on every graph. We wouldn't look at limits at infinity of just anything. But here we can look at the limit as x approaches infinity in the positive direction. And since we're going up and to the right forever on this graph, we do actually get a positive infinite value for our limit here with y equals ln x.